How did we get here, Dan, to these unprecedented suspensions? Well, you just went through it. I mean, it's repeated offenses. This is a player the NFL has talked to in the past, has suspended in the past, has fined in the past, has brought to New York for a meeting with the commissioner and disciplinary offices, officers where they have sat and reviewed tape. Here's what you're doing. Here's why it's wrong. Here's how to do it right. The league is at its wit's end with this player, and obviously a very severe suspension, unprecedented, as you mentioned, there's a thought that it might get reduced on appeal, but it'll still probably end up being a record setter, even if that happens. And Dan, to your point, I wouldn't be surprised if they reduce the suspension on appeal, but still to a significant number of games. What the league is getting out of this, Eldo, they're sending a very strong message to the rest of the league. This behavior is unacceptable. How are they sending a strong message, though, when you have a repeat offender and you're talking about the potential to reduce his sentence? Sending a clear message would be making sure that he sits out the entire year, no? Well, there's there's grades of this, right? Like, if the longest suspension for on-field behavior is currently three games, to go all the way to 12, I mean, that's very dramatic. And when you talk about players and the players' union and setting precedents, you don't want it to just be willy-nilly. So I think, to Mike's point, the league has come down hard and said, this is how seriously we take this. If there's an appeal that reduces it to something less, it's still going to be something significant, and that should send a message to other players. Look, you talk about missing game checks. You know, that, that's a lot of money. You talk about missing five or six or eight game checks. He's I mean, missed that, many. That, it's not a small thing. Right. The amount of money is $877,000 that's in the balance. So if he could recruit some of that, that'll be a win for Burfick. But hopefully he's learned the lesson, and this will be the end that we ever talk about this. There's a lot of hopeful, a lot of hopeful, hopeful optimism. Hopefully the fourth time is the charm, the fifth time, the 11th time. Oh, no. uh, Greedy, at some point you got to wonder, like, who's going to step in? Yeah, I, I think it actually is the 13th or 14th time that we've had some sort of issue of this kind with him. So I, I'm glad that we got to hear all of that from the insiders. I want to talk to the football players about the way players view this. this. This story was developing yesterday. We had a chance to talk about it here on Get Up. And Marcus, I'll start with you as a defensive player. I just want to hear what one player thinks of another player. As we're sitting and watching that video, you and I are just sitting here shaking yeah. our heads. It is blatantly dirty stuff. What does well, a player think of that? It, it's horrible. It's disrespectful to the code of the NFL, right? The number one code in the NFL is that we play hard, we play tough, but we're not in this business to end dude careers mm -hmm. or take away their livelihood and usually I'm a big proponent and I fight for players do you know that all the time but in this particular situation Vontez Burfitt needs to be kicked out of the NFL like and I know people have said that but this coming from me as a defensive player that is kind of bred and built on the physical tough nature of how you're supposed to play football but the intentional trying to like these are hit these are things that you are intentionally trying to get dudes ruined for yeah. their career. It's a difference in playing hard and these things occurring and players just going extra. We talk about that all the time in the NFL. But to go out, like, the, the one that's most egregious to me is the, him trying to break Cam's ankle, mm -hmm. right? And I remember that play taking place, and I remember having a conversation with a bunch of dudes that played in the league, like, Burfick way out there bad for that. that like, that's, that's the type of conversation we were having. So it, it's to that point, like, 13 is, I think, the number. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard this get thrown around in the last 24 hours. Well, he's a guy that you hate playing against, but you love having on your yeah. team. Really? Yeah. Because what happens if the Raiders are playing some the Chargers, right? And one of my boys is Phillip Rivers or Austin Eckler. And Burfecht takes a shot at him to his head and intentionally tries to hurt him. And he's laying on the ground. And that's my friend. I spend time with him. Jack Doyle has guys that he is lifelong friends with that are teammates of his. And, or teammates of Vontez Burfix. And so if I'm a teammate of Vontez Burfix and I now have to watch my friend lay down on the ground in an unconscious state, yeah. I, that's not a guy that I want on my football team. And we have to stop talking about the uh, taking away guys' careers. How about taking away guys' Like, ability to live their life yeah, off he could, the football he, he field. He could be taking away guys' careers with the way he's hitting people. And I'll credit Dan Graziano, who said at the meeting, his teammates, Vontez Burvick's teammates in, in, in Oakland this year, named him a captain. He was voted a captain. So the other guys on his team obviously see things in him that they like. But Gee, at some he, point, he, someone he, has to do He that. has been – he has facilitated the greatest coup of the NFL. With, with the personality off the field, all the things I've heard out of Oakland, he's a great teammate. But when you see stuff like this, like, it's, it's just so disrespectful. 
people to what we stand for as players when it comes to that particular situation. Vontez Berthick has been breaking the code, and, and this is another example. And ask example. yourself this. What has he done to prove that he does want to be in the NFL? He don't. He don't. And then you walk off blowing kisses and laughing. And, and, and to me, that's like not only spitting in the face of the guys that you, you've done this to, but it's also spitting in the face of the league yeah. that's giving you 13 chances. So we'll see. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.